Welcome to the first lesson about desktop automation in LibWork. Desktop automation covers all applications running on a Windows platform, like Word and Outlook, and it also covers applications built on SAP, Java, Microsoft, and many other technologies. It could be your CRM or order handling system, or any other front office or back office application. In this video, we'll introduce the basics of LibWork and show you some examples of how to automate a desktop application. The first automation flow looks like this. When I run the flow, the LibWork demo application is opening and we perform a login and end by verifying that the login is correct. LibWork ships with a demo desktop CRM application that we will use throughout the training lessons. The demo application contains the most usual elements that you will find in a desktop application, including lists of data, search functionality, and a form with different kinds of fields. You can use this to practice your LeapWork skills or try out different automations. In the videos, we are starting the application from an icon in the taskbar. So let me show you how you can add this easily. I'll start by unpinning it from my taskbar. And to add it again, simply navigate to the LeapWork installation folder on your C drive in Program Files, LeapWork, into the Studio subfolder, Demo Desktop folder, and find the Demo Desktop file itself and pin to Taskbar. This will add a slightly different LeapWork icon, the L is red on a white background, to your Taskbar for easy access to the demo app. Now with the demo application added to your Taskbar, let's start with the beginning. Automation in LeapWork is centered around flows, so we'll begin by creating a new one. You do this by simply clicking the blue New button and select Flow. A flow, aptly named New Flow, appears in the asset tree on the left. Note the blue highlighting. It's ready for me to give it a name. I will enter Desktop UI, Lesson 1. Automation flows in LeapWork are made out of building blocks, and we design and maintain the flows on the designer canvas. When we create a new flow, we only have one building block to start with, the start building block. We can move the building blocks around on the canvas, and we can zoom and center using the bottoms in the lower right corner. We can also pan the canvas using the mouse, either by pressing down the spacebar or by clicking the pan icon in the lower right corner. When we build a flow, we start by pulling the connector on the start building block. The connector is flexible, and we can add the next building block wherever we want. When I release the connector, the building block menu pops up and shows all the categories of building blocks. We can either open a category and select a building block, or just stop typing if we know the name of the building block. In this case, we will start with a Start Application Building Block, which is used for opening a desktop application. Once it's added, we can see a green arrow from the Start Building Block to the Start Application Building Block, which indicates the direction of the flow when the flow executes. You can say the green arrow drives the execution of the flow. In the Start Application Building Block, we can either specify the name of the application, the path to the application, but the easiest way is to capture the application that we want to open. I already have my demo application running, so when I click Capture, we can use the mouse to select this application. Once selected, all details about the application is captured back into the Start Application Building block, so it's now ready to execute. We can now click on the Play icon, and this will run the flow in preview mode. But first, let me just shut down the already open demo application and click the play button. When the demo application opens, we get a login box and we need to insert username and password. To do this, we add a set UI element value. And we place this after the start application block. This will find and set the value of a selected element 
in this case the username field, when the flow is running. To select the element, I click on the Select UI Element field. Loopwork now minimizes, and the entire desktop is now in capture mode. This means that we can use the mouse to select the elements that we want to set the value in. In this case, I select the Username field in the Login box, which captures the field back into Loopwork. We have a Text Value field, where we can input the text that we want to insert, in this case, the username, test. We do the same with the password. The only difference here is that we'll select the option password, so that the password is not in clear text inside the flow. The final piece in the login is to click on the login button. I add a click UI element and capture the login button. Instead of rerunning the entire flow to verify the logic, we can just right click one of the building blocks and select run flow from here. In this case, the flow will attach itself to the already open application and just execute from the selected building block. This makes it easy to do a stepwise progressive design of the flow while constantly making sure that the functionality works as expected. When the flow runs, we record a video of what goes on, so we now have a visual representation of everything that happened. If I scrub the video, I can see the building blocks lighting up when they're active and the activity log on the right is also following the video. These tools in combination makes this a very easy and powerful debugging tool. Also be aware that the default state of the flow is failed, unless we explicitly set the status to pass, which I will show in a minute. The last part of the login process is to verify that the login went well. And I'll do this by looking for an element on the screen that will only appear if the login went well. In this case, the name of the logged in user in the lower left corner in the main window. I add a find UI element with it. Capture the user part. And add a pass block if we can find this element. Let's run the entire flow from the start. I'll just close down the demo application and click the play button. As you can see, the flow now passed. In this video, we introduced how you create and design flows for desktop automation in Leapwork. We saw how to run and debug flows and how to open and capture desktop elements from applications. Thank you.